March 20th, 2011, 23 degrees, 33 minutes north, 35 degrees, 53 minutes east. After crossing the Suez Canal, Fleur de Passion arrives in the sunny Red Sea, where the Changing Oceans expedition will be doing most of its 2011 projects. The crew is pleased to be welcomed by a group of dolphins playing at the bow of the boat. There are six to eight species of dolphins present in the Red Sea. Of these, the bottlenose dolphin is the one most commonly encountered. Despite the popularity of dolphins, there is very little data on the number, distribution, and behavior of these animals. Year to year, dolphins are a major tourist attraction in the Red Sea. Near Urgada, there is a reef site where a group of 100 dolphins rest, reproduce, and socialize. Sometimes up to 30 boats may be present in the area, with hundreds of tourists on board. This is an unacceptable situation due to the extent to which this disturbs the dolphins. We start the search for dolphins with Michael, who has been studying them for a long time. He has observed that tourism, and in particular dolphin watching trips, have major impacts on the behavior and social life of the dolphins. So a lot of projects started to sell dolphin watch trips. And since this time, the behavior of the dolphins changed because the reefs where they go in the daytime is shallow water areas and they come there to rest. So if the boats follow them all of the time on the surface, the dolphins start to become nervous. They move much more, they don't play so much like they did before, and it's very difficult to watch a natural behave. We have to take care of the dolphins because all the studies in the world, they showed already that the boat presence decreasing the resting time of the dolphins. So it's uh, not necessary to close the whole area because when dolphins are in the mood to interact with divers, snorkelers, it's not a problem. The problem is that the boats are following all the time the dolphins. Tourists crowding the sites where dolphins rest and reproduce is not the only threat. The dolphinarium trade is a lucrative one and the greed of certain individuals even extends as far as the storage of dolphins in hotel swimming pools while waiting for dolphinariums to be completed. There are many arguments to say why dolphins should be in the wild and not in pools. Chlorinated water, small living spaces and inappropriate diets based solely on dead fish in dolphinariums put considerable physiological and psychological stress on the dolphins. In the wild, they're doing so many things, they're socializing, they're building new groups. Of course, they have um, small groups, friendships, even the friends, they stay forever, for a whole life. In a pool, they have all the time the same group, they are stick with the same individuals. They cannot choose with whom they want to be. The communication is another point. They do echolocation, very high, a frequency sound to locate their prey in a pool, they don't use it anymore. Dolphins are a precious resource for Egypt. Professor Hanafi, chief scientist for HEPCA, a local NGO, has studied the financial value of dolphins for the country. In general, living resources are more valuable than any other non-living resources. One single dolphin on Samudai, for example. We estimated the value of this dolphin, single dolphin, how much direct income, I mean direct income, how much the tourist or the tourists paid on annual basis to see a single dolphin in Samudai. It's about $91,000 per single dolphin per year. If this dolphin living for 25 years, on average, how much the value of this dolphin? It's huge. While most species of dolphins in the Red Sea are not endangered today, they soon will be if measures are not put in place to protect them. The first step in creating solutions to protect dolphins is to collect data on their location and behavior. Our aims of the Dolphin Watch Natural Underwater Science Project is to monitor the population size of the Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphin around the Urgada area. 
and we also analyze the behavior, underwater behavior, and we want to know more about the social structure, friendships, family structure maybe as well. And um, we want to analyze the critical areas, habitats where dolphins are resting, coughing, foraging, and traveling, so we can maybe make some protected areas for the dolphins. In Samadai, a reef where dolphins are often present, immediate measures have been taken by the government and HEPCA. The reef has been divided into different zones where certain human activities are restricted in order to protect the local dolphin population. Samadai is probably the first example of a successful and sustainable uh, managed protected area for dolphins that can ensure the health of the population and at the same time meet all needs of the tourist industry. Uh, zone A is the inner lagoon, is where dolphins spend most of the time. Nobody can go in unless they have special permissions. The following uh, zone is, is called Zone B and this is for snorkelers only. After that there is a Zone C, which is the outer one, where boats are allowed to moor. This makes the place quieter for dolphins that can decide to stay in Zone A and nobody is bothering them. But Whenever they feel like having an interaction, they can freely move within the area. We are guests at sea, and an interaction should be established by the dolphins and not by us. The direct participation of the public is required if measures to protect dolphins are to be effective. The objective is to raise awareness so that tourists and locals appreciate wildlife and accept that their access to it may sometimes be limited rather than readily accessible. Whether in dolphinariums or in the wild, the public must understand that their activities cannot continue without regard for the cost to dolphin communities.